Welcome back guys. So in today's video, we are going to be going over 12 of my favorite tools that you can pick up for less than 20 bucks. Not all tools in a workshop have to be extremely expensive. Actually, some of the handiest tools that I own are the cheapest tools to purchase. So let's go ahead and dive into this video and I'm going to show you some around the $20 range. And I know you guys are thinking about tools just from the title. You already have some in mind. So if I do not mention them, make sure to drop those into the comments below so that our woodworking community can benefit from your knowledge and experience with tools as well. And just so you know, none of these tool companies have sponsored this video. These are just tools that I've used over the years and that I still use every day in the shop. And all of these tools that I'm about to talk about, I will drop a link into the description on where to find them. So let's go ahead and jump into this video, the Multimark by Craig. So if you've watched the channel much, you know that I love anything that has a lot of different features packed into one item. And that's where this little baby comes in. So the Multimark is actually packed full of different features. It makes it a piece of pie to transfer different measurements to different work pieces. You can draw straight lines down any type of a board. You can actually use it as a T-square, transferring over material depth and using it to set up my blade depths. It can even be used as a level and for laying out miter cuts. That's the reason why this little baby made the list. Lights. Okay, so I'm going to show you two of these just because they kind of go into the same category, but they do two totally different things and they're both pretty cheap. One's 20 bucks and one's about $14. We have a COB light. So the COB basically just means it's a strip of lights. Compact. Also has a magnet, so you can stick it to anything metal and light up your work surface. We all know that no matter how much light that we have, we get into work areas where there's a shadow being cast. Anytime that you have a shadow on your workpiece, it is setting you up for an error, and these little cheap lights can take care of that. The cool thing about the COB light is, is once you have applied your finish to your project, you can run this over the top of the finish and it will actually show you any flaws in your finish that you can't see with your normal lighting. These things are super handy and for 20 bucks may actually cost you a lot more than that if you have to redo an entire finish or you make a wrong cut because of a shadow. And then our other light is just a flex shaft light. The reason why I like this little flex shaft light is like I said, anytime that you have a machine casting a shadow, you have room for error. And for $14, you can prevent that. You can buy these that are wireless or you can buy these that you plug in. Usually if I'm using this, it will be attached to my machine with this magnet. So there will be a plug close by. If you have electricity close by and an extra outlet, why recharge these things and worry about the batteries going out and all that? The super cool thing about these lights is the flex shaft. Hence the name. So you can literally bend these in all kinds of different ways to get the light exactly where you need it and when you need it. So everyone's nemesis for some reason seems to be cutting crown molding. That's where these little babies come in. These are crown stops. Several different companies make them. So most miter saws, and I bet you haven't even noticed it, but go check your saw. And I bet you that you'll find that there is a place for a bolt to be screwed into the side of your saw. That is how these crown stop attach. They attach by using a wing nut. So you would nest your crown molding upside down as you normally would. And then you would apply your crown stop and slide it in and lock it down. This makes it so where every time that you put a new piece of crown onto your miter saw for a another cut, you already set up for the exact same spring angle as your previous cut. And there are several different ways to cut crown molding, but if you use the nesting method like most people do, pick up a set of these and I guarantee you they will pay for themselves probably the first time that you use them just from saving yourself crown molding. And then we have our rotary tool and they make cordless versions of these. I prefer the corded version because you don't have to worry about the battery running down. And this is something if you use it very often, you'll go through some batteries. But yes, the name brand of the rotary tools are expensive. You do not have to have the name brand. I've had this one, which is actually labeled a rotary grinder for probably 15 years. I actually found one online that's less than $20 that comes with the flex shaft. These things are perfect for getting into small areas, sanding, grinding. You've seen the sets of all the hundreds of different types of bits. You've actually seen me use these in videos when it comes to fine sanding and even power carving. This is another awesome multi-use tool that you can pick up for less than 20 bucks. So the next tool is debatable on whether it would actually be a tool or a device, but it's only about 10 bucks and it's on my head. 
safety glasses. Yes, we all have safety glasses and we should wear them all the time. We know this. But what are the problems that we have with normal safety glasses? For years, I buy the cheapest glasses that I could find. They were like 99 cents, throw them around. They get scratches all over them. You couldn't wear a mask. You had to choose whether to wear your mask or to wear your safety glasses because your glasses would fog up with the mask. And I've actually found a solution for that as well. I'll cover that here in a minute. But these safety glasses by 3M have a built-in gasket and it's a soft foam gasket. So whenever I put these on, it actually creates a seal, sits really comfortable against my face to the point that most of the time I'm walking around the shop with these things on and I have no clue. This gasket is removable if you want to replace it over time. But I've actually had these for several months and never had to replace the gasket yet. I actually started wearing these after I had eye surgery to prevent dust from being blown up or in. You know how that works. Dust always seems to find its way in. Not with these glasses. Definitely worth the 10 bucks. So while we're talking about our PPE and our safety glasses, I'm gonna go ahead and throw in this dust mask. This is an RZ mask. I'm not sponsored by any of these guys. It's just over the years, I found the things that work the best. So I hate any type of mask that goes over my ears, fogs up my glasses. It's just not comfortable to wear, especially if you're wearing it for a long time. That's where this little baby comes in. This is the one that you actually see me wearing in my video, so it's a little dusty, but the inside liner can be replaced and it actually comes with a couple of different replacements. It has the one-way valve, so whenever you breathe out, the air and the humidity can actually escape. And then when you breathe in, it has to be filtered. One thing that I like the most about the mask is the way that it fits. So it actually fits around my neck. It's a soft pad on the inside. Your ears don't get sore and it does not fog up your glasses. Normally these are a little higher than 20 bucks, but I actually looked on their website and they're running some on sale for 20 bucks. I do have a promo code that I'm gonna throw into the description. It's gonna get you an extra 15% off. So check those out. And I just thought that I would throw these in since we were talking about my favorite types of PPE. So we've got our glasses, we've got our mask. These are not in the $20 range, but just an FYI, these things are solid. That is my axle electronic ear protection. Basically, once you have those on, you can flip a button and now you're electronic. So my big thing was I did not wear ear protection for years because I did not want someone coming in behind me and like having a jump scare if I'm running the table saw. That's just not good. So I needed to be able to hear everything that was going on. I need to be able to hear my machine. I need to be able to hear somebody's coming through the door. That's where these come in handy. It brings the decibels that can damage your hearing down to a safe level. Another cool thing is if you want to jam out to something while you're working, they make these in Bluetooth as well. So you can listen to some music and still be able to hear everything around you. I have a discount code for these as well that I'll throw into the description. I think it gets you about 15% off. And this is one of my recently discovered favorite tools. Okay, so this is a drill guide by Craig. This thing is awesome because in many situations, it can take the place of a drill press. If you need a hole drilled straight into your workpiece for anything up to a half of an inch, this is where it's at. The back of it is designed to center itself on three quarter or half inch material to make sure that your holes are perfectly centered. Basically, this jig acts as a guide for your bit, making sure that any hole that you drill is perfectly straight. So I've been using this thing for several months and it is awesome. The only thing that you really have to take into consideration is the depth of your hole. So you have to account for the thickness of the tool itself and the depth of the hole that you want to drill. But this thing is a lifesaver because it can get into all kinds of places that a drill press cannot. And the best thing of all is this is less than 10 bucks. It's like eight bucks. So for $8, you cannot beat this handy little pocket tool. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about some digital products, okay? So this first one is digital calipers. And yes, you can pick up a nice set for less than 20 bucks. Calipers can be used for all kinds of different things. It's not just in millwork. Whenever you need to know exact thicknesses, let's say if it's an odd thickness, you can find that thickness, lock it down, transfer it over. You can use the bottom to take measurements in places that you can't get other tools. And the cool thing about these 
is it can measure the outer diameter as well as the inner diameter of about anything up to six inches. So let's say that I've noticed a missing bolt on one of my pieces of equipment. You can either use this side of the calipers to find the ID of the bolt hole, or let's say I had more than one bolt, you could take out one of the others and just measure the OD of that. And then you'll know what size part that you're missing. So a lot more uses than what you would think inside of a workshop. I find myself using this a lot and when you really need it, the time spent trying to figure something out without it, it will pay for itself. And then we have a digital protractor or angle finder. It can be used for several different things and they're under 20 bucks. I actually use this a lot for making sure that my blades are square with my tables. And of course, just like any protractor, it will tell you any type of odd angle and you can actually lock it down and transfer that onto another workpiece. Protractor's uses are endless while you're in the shop. Even though you do not see me using a protractor a lot in my videos, I use these almost every single day when it comes to making my prototypes, especially when we're dealing with any type of angles that I need to try to figure out what matches up and how to transfer that over to my miter saw. And then we have a digital angle gauge. This thing is one of the handiest tools. I think that every workshop should have one. This is another tool that I have in my arsenal for checking my blades to make sure that they are square with my work surface. Another thing that I commonly use this for is to make sure that the bevel of my miter saw is set correctly. But where this comes in super handy is whenever you need to make very precise cuts. So let's say the dresser in the back, the split dresser. There are some very complicated angles that go into that dresser and every single one of those table saw cuts were determined by this little gauge. So if I needed to make a 42 and a half degree cut, you really can't tell by the gauge on your table saw exactly where you're at. But with this little $20 gauge, you can be precise every time. And this little baby, yeah, it's dusty and dirty because I use it. I would consider this more of a, an accessory to a tool. This is a foot pedal. I primarily keep mine hooked up to my drill press. It works out great for turning the drill press on and off. So as soon as I put my foot down onto the pedal, the drill comes on and once my foot leaves the pedal, everything shuts down. So this saves me time and I can instantly turn my machine on or off. Just like with the drill press, the lights came on, the drill came on. Then whenever I took my foot off, all the power was cut to the machine. Another cool way to use this is let's say that you have this hooked up to a shop back for sanding. We just plug into here. This goes into the wall. You hit the pedal. Your shop back or dust collector will actually kick on. And as soon as you release this, it shuts off. So if you have a sanding station, this thing would be perfect. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that I was able to show you some uses for some tools that you can pick up for pretty cheap that will actually come in handy in your shop. And any of these would make perfect stocking stuffers for the woodworker in your life. So a little trick is to buy something that you actually want and give it to someone that you know is not going to use it. And then they'll give it back to you just a little bit later. So keep that under your hat there. And like I said at the beginning, if you guys have your own tools that you have in mind for around the $20 range, throw them down into the description. I would love to see the tools that you suggest that I may not know about or I'm just not thinking about. So it would actually help us all. So until next time, guys, go out there, dream up a project, okay? Think divergently, think like no other, and make that reality. So yeah, perfect gifts for others, perfect stopping. Stopping. What's a stopping? It's a new word. Put it in the dictionary. Stopping. And then we have a mess. So let's say that I've lost one of my bolts. Lost my mind.